Video games are an ever-evolving form of entertainment, notoriously for introducing new things that amaze even the most seasoned players. But as with everything, they're prone to the old saying, you can have too much of a good thing. When first introduced, new game features can be, well, game changers. The first time an open world was created was way back in 1984. This was a small gem called Courageous Perseus, and it influenced one of the most significant open world games in video game history, The Legend of Zelda. However, since then it has become an overused concept, with hundreds if not thousands of games following in its footsteps. There are many features that have become stale over the years, frustrating players when implemented into games with no real rhyme or reason. Sometimes it can feel like developers add them in to simply bring in a larger audience, flaunting all of the new features added to their game regardless of how well they work. So without further ado, I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 video game features that players used to love but are now sick of. Number 10, Survival Bars. A staple of survival games, Survivor Bars, can add a new level of challenge, making the player look after the character they're playing as, unless they wish to perish due to a lack of food or water. Although this feature has a place in a lot of games, it's starting to feel like constantly having to babysit the playable character's needs is more often an added task to be ticked off in order to fill time. Many of these games have fantastic narratives to follow and fun mechanics to go with these, but it's really hard to follow a story and complete main quest lines when you're worrying if you have enough bread to carry you over until the end. A perfect example of this would be We Happy Few, a game with such a good setting that it raised more on Kickstarter than it set out to. This can be accredited to the excitement people had to play in the eerie Wellington Wells. Following the story behind the drug Joy, as well as the individual stories of the playable characters, posed a breath of fresh air from the generic shooters and battle royales we were becoming accustomed to. However, it was hard to enjoy the lovingly crafted story when players were constantly dragged out of the narrative to pick berries or fill canisters with water. Number 9. Weapon Durability Speaking of things that add challenge to games and unnecessarily take players out of the action, it would be unfair not to mention weapon durability. Having tools with durability can be a welcome feature in games like Minecraft, where materials are abundant and it usually takes only a minute to gather and craft what's needed. It adds an essence of realism, as there's only a number of times a pickaxe can be hit against metals and rocks before it starts to give way. But it's a real life issue that doesn't need to follow players into every single game. Realism in gaming can be great, but it can also lead to less enjoyment. Zelda Breath of the Wild caused some controversy with its seemingly paper mache weapons, dividing the player base into people for or against this feature that was new to the series. It can be frustrating to realise that in a few hits, the weapon being used is going to break, even more so when there's nowhere nearby to restock or acquire more. Although this does make it so certain weapons aren't overused and massively favoured in every battle, due to having to conserve their uses, it also forces players to use weapons they don't like, and aren't necessarily good at using. Number 8. Towers some games can be unimaginably beautiful, and quite often a player will seek out an area they consider to be screenshot worthy. Pairing scenic views and an objective to complete in order to reveal the game's map, Assassin's Creed had people climb to high up places as Altair to synchronise data to the Animus. This would then show the locations around them to the player. Since then, several games have followed suit, and had players climb up to the peaks of what are usually towers to reveal maps or objectives slash collectibles nearby. Admittedly, this is usually in Ubisoft games, and they are aware of this, adding dialogue to Far Cry 5 when climbing a tower as a reference to just how many times there have been previously in other instalments. Yet there are other games that have used this feature, or very similar, take Dying Light as an example. Adding a way to not have everything revealed to players immediately is a great idea, as this allows for gradual exploration and completion of activities, but surely there are more creative ways to do this that don't involve having to climb to an area only to have to go right back down after hitting a button prompt. Number 7. Choices Telltale games are very known for having choice-driven narratives that allow the players to decide the fates of characters, as well as control over how the story unfolds. There are many other games that use similar systems, usually to give a penultimate good or bad ending. Red Dead Redemption 2 and Spec Ops The Line are fantastic examples of this, allowing players to make conscious decisions that will affect the story later on. 
Despite this, decisions in games have left a sour taste in one's mouth, and they often end up having very little actual impact. There are many games guilty of giving the illusion of choice, but then follow on to the same path regardless of what's chosen, with very minor changes to the outcome in some cases. In addition to this, there are also decisions to be made in places where it may not necessarily make sense, and are so minor that players are left wondering what the point of them were. So not only have choices in games become rather overused, they've also grown seemingly more pointless and unnecessary, only added in to create a little more engagement with the plot. Number 6. Stealth Sections Pacing in games is important, as it can be really off-putting when the likes of fast-paced shooters are brought down to a snail's pace. Unfortunately, this type of thing happens a lot. Usually this entails adding a stealth section to games where stealth hasn't previously been a concern. Although players may like the idea of changing things up for the player in order to make things not too monotonous, it can be rather jarring when you're randomly thrown into an area that you've never been. This is especially true if you are only just hacking through hordes of enemies. One of the worst forced stealth sections in video game history has to be from Final Fantasy XV. In a game that's usually about exploration and working your way through perilous dungeons, the part where the player was required to reclaim regalia was almost like pacing whiplash. Players had the game suddenly halt the action they were used to and instead had them crawl slowly past enemies. There's nothing wrong with having different gameplay styles incorporated into one game, but when it's a drastic change and a one-off in the game, it leaves one thinking whether that section of the game was needed at all. Number 5. Collectibles For the completionists out there, this may be a conflicting one. Having secrets dotted around the map as well as items out in the open is a good way to have the player explore the map and acquire additional lore about the game. The issue with them, however, is just how many you should put in your game. Some games have players endlessly trudging around the environments, searching every nook and cranny, trying to find every collectible. It's not even just minor lore points and fun little gimmicks being hidden in game worlds anymore. Games like Ghost Recon Breakpoint require players travel around, gathering intel and clearing encampments to find the weapons and attachments that they wanted. Items that would usually be considered as parts of progression are relegated to mere collection pieces. This can lead to players looking up walkthroughs to find out how to unlock certain items, only to find out that it was obscurely placed in an area that they were a few hours ago. Trinkets and lore entries dotted around can be neat to have, especially to players dedicated to certain games, but with how things have evolved, most players are having to keep their eyes permanently peeled in case they miss something that they really want to use in-game. Number 4. Crafting it can be stressful to need healing items in the heat of a fight, only to have to enter a menu and craft some, more than ever when you realise that you haven't picked up enough items in order to do so. This is a growing issue in recent games as healing items and ammo seem to have been given to players less and less. Instead, it's required that they gather resources and make their own. A balance of both of these systems could work if the player had been given a healthy supply of healing items, ammo and crafting resources that they could then use to make additional items if they needed. But again, it seems players are expected more and more to go off the beaten path and take a break from the action that they play the game for. Instead, they have to gather resources to make sure that they can last into the next fight. Games like Resident Evil where health and ammo are meant to be in short supply are usually slightly better with this. They typically give the player enough to get by without taking the challenge out of the game. However, some games aren't as generous and leave the player needing to backtrack constantly in order to have a chance of progressing. Number 3. Waves of Enemies Difficulty in games is an important thing to have right. Make it too easy and people will breeze through. Make it too hard and there's a chance people may just quit. This can be through the health of bosses or the challenge posed by puzzles depending on the type of game. One way that a lot of games increase difficulty is by throwing more enemies at the player. This can be across the whole of a level, at random points, or even alongside the bosses they face. Due to this, it can feel like the boss of a stage isn't the main threat, because instead, the minions around it jeopardise your chances of success. Tokyo 42 did this only for the final mission, and caused disappointment among a lot of those who had been enjoying the game. Another example of a game that uses primarily is Remnant from the Ashes, a Souls-like shooter. Throughout the game you face many bosses, which is customary of the genre, however the bosses aren't at all difficult, usually a player's death will be accredited to the many smaller spawns throughout the fight. Damn those exploding monsters that rush the player. Number 2. RPG Systems 
RPG systems entail leveling up and assigning points to skills in order to match your playstyle, but they have been added to games where they don't really have a place. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is an odd game in the series, adopting the division's gear score and leveling systems. Longtime fans of the series were giving this in a series where you don't have to worry about leveling up, but instead just about shooting the bad guys. Even Ubisoft realised that this was not well received by fans and added Immersive Mode, where the gear score was removed so players could acquire weapons and use them without worrying about damage drop-off at higher levels. RPG games are fantastic. The Witcher 3 and Skyrim both provide excellent playing experiences, only improved by players being able to choose what they excel at in terms of skills and combat. However, these systems can really make or break a game depending on how fitting they actually are to the genre or pacing of everything else involved in the experience. Number 1. Cutscenes This is a weird one. Cutscenes are one of the best ways for video games to portray the story and present important events to the player, but is there any need for there to be so many? In an age where some people have very little time to play games, it can be annoying to have to sit through hours of animated cutscenes rather than being able to actually play the game. Some games are generous and give their players an option to skip these and get right back to the actions, but not all. Until recently, Borderlands 3 was not one of those games where cutscenes were skippable, requiring players to sit for extended periods of time listening to Lilith or the bothersome Calypso twins. It didn't help that in order to acquire the best items in the game, players needed to play through True Vault Hunter mode, which is essentially New Game Plus. So not only did they have to sit through all the dialogue the first time, they have to sit through the exact same stuff the second time over, with no option to cut it out. There's nothing inherently wrong with cutscenes in games, but there are other ways to present players with dialogue and plot rather than making your game feel more like a movie. Looking at you, Quantum Break. And there we go, they are the 10 video game features that players used to love, but we are now sick of. What's one of the features that you are now sick of? Leave us a comment down below and let us know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. But for now, I have been Kirsten from What Culture, and I will see you in the next video.